Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about something called the law of cosines. And the law of cosines is kind of a hybrid between the Pythagorean theorem and trigonometry. And you can use the law of cosines when you want to find the lengths of the sides of a non-right triangle, or if you want to find the angles of a non-right triangle. Now, just a couple of reminders. Remember that the Pythagorean theorem, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, right, is only uh, available for right triangles, right? Triangles that have a 90 degree angle. Trigonometry, the trigonometric ratios, right, uh, you know, sine is sine of any angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, right, et cetera, et cetera. Those are also only good for non-right triangles. Now, this law of cosines is actually good for any non-right triangle, and you can find the lengths of the sides or the length or the angles themselves, and this is the basic form. Now, th there are a couple of um, restrictions, okay? You can use this law when you know two sides of a non-right triangle and remember what's called the included angle. The included angle has to be in between the two lengths that you know. It couldn't be out here or up here, for example. The other time that you can use the law of cosines is when you know all three sides of the triangle and you want to figure out what the angles are. Okay, so we're going to do this example, and I'm going to show you how this works. All right, so let's take a quick look at this. So here we know two sides and the included angle, right? So we, since we know that the uh, one of the angles is C, we can actually use this form because we know what the cosine of C is. It just makes it a little bit easier. We don't know the length of C, though, so we're going to say C squared is equal to, let me just rewrite this, okay, A squared plus B squared minus 2 AB cosine C. Okay, now let's fill in what we know. We don't know C, so we're going to keep that the way it is. We know that A is 6. We know that B is 8. We know that, again, that A is 6, so let's put that there. We know that B is 8. And by the way, notice I'm always putting, whenever I replace a variable, I put it in parentheses. I would strongly, strongly, strongly suggest you do the same thing. It just helps you keep track of calculations and make them correct, right? And then I also know that the cosine of C, so I'm going to put in 40 degrees here because that's the angle. So the cosine of 40 degrees. Now let's go ahead and calculate all those that we know. C squared is equal to 36 plus 64 minus 12 times 8. I guess I could have done that all in one fell swoop. And I know that the cosine, I looked it up, the cosine of 40 degrees is 0.766. Okay, so let's keep on going here. Step four. C squared is equal to 136 plus 64. Remember to follow PEMDAS here. Uh, 12 times 8 is 96, times 0.766. Now again, following PEMDAS, I have to multiply this first. So 96 times, se whoop, let me just write the rest of this. 100 minus 96 times 0 0.766 is 73.5, rounded. Next step. I get C squared is equal to 26.5. Okay, take the square root of both sides. Last step. I like using these little Roman numerals because it helps me keep track of my steps, and it's like writing what I call a math paragraph, right? And I know what each sentence is. It's really pretty, pretty handy. 
So I'm going to say C squared, square root of both sides. And I'm going to get with my final answer, C is equal to 5, approximately 5.1. And I can go back and fill this in over here, okay? And that's how you find the third length of a side, if you know two sides, and the um, included angle. Now, <clears throat> in this particular case, we use c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c, but there are some other forms that I want you to know. You can also find, if you know, for example, know that the angle a you can actually just use this formula, a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. If you know angle b, you can use this one. And again, if you know angle c, we can use this one. So just be very uh, observant about what information you do know and choose the correct formula. Okay, I hope that was helpful to you.